again, uh, the orchestra as we know it today basically started around 1600. In the court of, of the King of France, he had 24 professional string players and this they were divided by and large into five parts for the music of Lully and his contemporaries, you'll find it's mostly in five parts. But it didn't take long for the string orchestra to become established as a four-part body. Two first violins, one viola, and then cello bass doubling the bass line. This is a two-part invention by Bach. We're going to take this and arrange it for a string orchestra. First the original. first of all for violin and cello and harpsichord. The harpsichord will play with the left hand the same as the cello part, but the right hand will have to create chords and these chords we can then put into basso continuo figuring for the left hand. At the beginning of this arrangement I've written the right hand more or less how a player would probably play it, but then at the end of that you'll notice I then just go on to just making a simple sketch of the harmony, which is what you'll basically need if you want to make an arrangement of this piece. So the next step is to split the violin part between first and second violins. We can simply hop with the melody from one to the other, but the other part will then probably play simple, uh, a simple line to just double the harmony. And then of course we have to split the uh, bass line between cello and doubling bass and viola. Now this, before we can do that we have to consider something very special about the viola. Because of course the viola has its own clef, the alto clef, tends to be used almost exclusively for the viola, and it's simply the most convenient. The, uh, it takes a little getting used to if you haven't handled it already. The middle line of the clef is the middle C on the piano, and the way I always try and encourage people to think about this is if you think of the piano, two staves being squeezed together so that there's just the middle C line between them, well then you would have an 11 line stave and then the middle five lines of that stave are what you would be using for the viola clef. So now dividing up the bass line between viola and cello and double bass, you'll notice that I let the double bass rest between bars 7 and 10. 
This gives it a very dramatic re-entry in number 11 with the main theme. All right? Now this is what I mean by the type of rhythmic pacing. We're talking about a sense of drama with the orchestration. It makes an enormous difference when the double bass is playing or when it's not. You'll notice that when we hear the whole thing together. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching.